Hello, it's Guthrie Govan here, and this is our final instalment of the bending odyssey that's uh, taken us through maybe five months now. Um, it's been emotional. Um, I figured it would be fun to end by adding a somewhat unfashionable technique to our bending repertoire. What, what would happen, we must ask ourselves, if we combine all our string bending chops with a little bit of tapping? And this is sometimes considered to be the province solely of the heavy metal shred monster, but the way I see it, tapping is just another way to play notes that this hand can't reach on its own. Um, so I've never been a fan of that whole stigma that sometimes gets attached to it. Tapping is just another way to make sounds, and you can use it for all sorts of crazy purposes, as hopefully we are about to find out. Um, as with last month, I thought I'd concoct some short licks to demonstrate a few different approaches. And really, it's the approach in each case that's more important than the lick itself. These are not awesome licks. They're just designed to house certain technical ideas that you can hopefully apply in your own vocabulary. So let's start with something that's not too bizarre. Um, the core of this basic idea, and it would work over E minor, um, is that kind of Jan Hammer flavoured uh, bending and then releasing very quickly and hammering thing that we visited a few months back. That's the basic idea. You bend up at your leisure and then release and hammer instantaneously. So if you want to add a little something to that rhythmically, you could maybe start by tapping this note. Um, like that. You have to be a little careful because the B string sometimes wants to ring out and join in the fun. You must not permit it to do so. And there's a way to do that if you're thinking in eighth notes or sixteenth notes. So you've got this... Um, So it kind of rhythmically displaces every time that three note pattern comes back. Um, this will be more clear when you look at the music in the magazine. Um, and then a little token Van Halenism at the end. Uh, if you want to squeeze twice as much value out of one basic lick, you could maybe, instead of doing, doing that at the end, you could do... And then it becomes a nice... G major lick instead of an E minor one. Um, but the, the core of it is this. And then... So I think the text in the magazine should explain all the pitfalls there, all the things that you have to worry about. Um, this part is simple enough. This might be unfamiliar to some of you if you're not headbangers by nature, but the, the idea is you bend this string up and then just try to tap that string wherever it lands naturally, post-bend. So yeah, whole thing. Sorry, two, three, four. I'm sure you can find a home for that. Lick number two, this time around, um, is a little bit country flavored. I make no apologies for this. Country guys have all the best bending fun and just to kind of subvert things slightly, we're adding in a tap note here and there, but hopefully it will still sound a little bit southern fried. Um, and the idea here is it's a combination of bending, tapping the bent string, well, in fact, I've just blown it. I've just played you the whole lick. That's it. Um, So as you can probably hear, that's a G major kind of thing. Um, sorry, the, the only thing to watch out for there is once you've got that pattern, um, the, the G string version takes a little bit longer because you're doing that. You bend this string up, tap, pull off, but holding the bend, and then tap two frets lower and then release. 
and then that at the end, that's how it resolves with the tap note. So. And that's lick number two, painless. Lick number three coming up now, a um, little bit more of a fast, fluid, widdly sounding lick. Um, but rather than dive in with the whole thing, I'll show you where the problem area is. Um, we're using two fingers to tap this time. Um, I like to keep this pick tucked away in that finger because you never know when you might need your pick to be accessible again. So that leaves me with these two fingers, um, the tobacco stained middle finger and the little finger there. Which can do this kind of thing and they can hammer on and pull off just like normal fingers on this hand. Um, let me see. Huh? I generally prefer pulling off with the fingertip coming in towards the palm because that feels more reminiscent of what this conventional fretting hand has been doing for years. Some people like to flick out so the, the fingertip goes out towards the floor rather than curling in. Um, all I can say is experiment. Uh, it's a relatively young art form so there isn't really a right or wrong way to tap. There's only the way that sounds good and feels natural. Um, so the trick here is um, you have a, this kind of pentatonic run on the G string. Um, so you get comfortable with that and then once you've gone all the way up and down with your tapping hand you can kind of bend up and what your tapping hand has to do there is just kind of ride on the string and let the string move as dictated by what your bending hand is doing. So your tapping hand doesn't participate in the actual bending process, it just kind of hangs in there. And if you can do that then it has a, a kind of partner mini lick there. Um, so this hopefully feels a little bit keyboardy and kind of pitch wheel infused. Uh, I shall now attempt to show you the whole lick. Uh, this works in 16th note triplets, although you may wish to adapt it for your own wicked ends. Um, so it would start like that. So if you're just thinking da ke da da ke da da ke da all the way through in a bar of 4-4 four, four, then that final long bent note should magically pop up on beat one of the second bar. So there you go. Um, I think you can have some fun with that one maybe. And now we should travel back in time for lick number four. Um, this is basically a way to emulate a blues harmonica lick. Um, I might even be naughty and use the overdrive channel of my V30 amplifier. Um, um, so the, the idea here is to use the same kind of bend and tap mechanism but to add a kind of trilling motion. Um, so lots of filth, maybe roll the tone down a little bit. So just two basic places to do this trill and note that it's actually the bend that makes it effective. If I'm just going... It doesn't quite sound bluesy enough but there's something about having this at the start. That somehow makes it sound more authentic. And that's it, that's lick number four. Not much going on there in fingering terms but hopefully you can hear what the lick is going for. Yeah. For lick number five, I figured we'd go back to the comfort of the clean channel, and we're going to be doing some slightly strange things here, all for the sake of sounding a little bit like country music. I keep coming back to this theme, but it's fun. It's fun here. Um, Clearly a G major lick, and I guess you don't need a pick for this. Um, 
These are the, the core components of the lick. You would tap a fourth interval with these two fingers kind of glued together on the top two strings. And then you're using this hand to bend. So, so far so good. So far that's a lick that you could play conventionally. But what we're going to do now is pull off with both fingers at the same time. And you could either do that or you could bring the tapping fingers back and this is what I've chosen to transcribe in the magazine. Like that. And then uh, you can while these are still ringing, you can relocate this hand to here. Pull off to the seventh fret and then slide up. So it's a little bit pedal steely, but a little bit odd as well. Huh? And that was lick number five. Okay, uh, this is it. This is our last bending lick. It's been quite an adventure. I hope you've had as much fun as I have. I thought we could end with something a little more unusual. As has become the tradition, I'm trying to go for a pedal steel sound here, but using some slightly unconventional approaches. And I haven't entirely figured out how to explain this one to you, but it sounds like this, and it's a G major lick. Um, so that's kind of all over the place. But there are three main areas where the fun is happening. The first one is here. So it's that same idea of tapping a double stop, bending the lower note, and then releasing. But the twist here is that your tapping fingers kind of come off at unusual times. So for the first part of the lick, this hand is doing that, and this is tapping here. And then if you break it down, it does this. You bend up the tap note here, tap this string, and now pull off with the E string finger. And now, as a separate rhythmic event, pull off with the other tap finger, and now release. So... Um, I think your main priority, apart from pitching, has to be making sure that there's rhythmic definition and all of these notes come out evenly spaced. And now the next kind of area is your, your fretting hand down here and your tapping up here. So the same kind of idea. Um, you tap the lower uh, string there, bend up, tap that one, and then that. So it's reminiscent of the first thing we did. And now to round it all off, um, so you have, and because we're on lower strings now, you really have to um, be, be conscious of the fact you're bending the D string, which is not something you necessarily do every day. Uh, so, three little areas there. And when you try and join all of that together, uh, one thing that will throw you is that you have to kind of sneak this hand down from there to here, kind of when no one's looking. Um, right there, while I'm tapping this note, this fretting hand has to come down. That's it. That was lick number six. Have fun. Happy bending. Cheers.